Uh, Gary, thing number four, uh, recently, I know you're super close with Michael Gaed of the Lead Lag Report. Uh, you were on his show recently talking a little bit about inflation and energy. Uh, Michael runs at Lead Lag Report on X, does a great job. Thing number four, Gary, tell us more about that. DKI sits down with Michael Gaed from the Lead Lag Report. Yeah, thanks, Rob. Gaed's terrific. Uh, he is one of the hardest working men in finance. If you don't follow him on Twitter or X, it's at Lead Lag Report. I recommend following him. Um, he does a fantastic podcast. He gets interviews with everybody, uh, really just about anybody who has a, a big profile in finance has sat down to talk with him. He does long form interviews. None of these, you know, like three, four minute TV segments. You know, when you're talking to Guy Ed, you get a solid hour of great, well-prepared questions. He gives people a lot of space to talk. And uh, he's been kind enough to have me on his show at least three or four times, maybe more. I don't even remember now. Uh, it's something I really appreciate. So the key thing that we were talking about during uh, last week's episode, which we filmed a couple weeks ago, um, is actually inflation, which is what we were just talking about with Paul Tudor Jones and Stanley Druckenmiller. Um, and one of the things I talked about is that I think the current inflation surge is being driven by excessive government spending. And that's illustrated by the fact that over 50% of all dollars in existence were created in just two years. Now, there's been a lot of debate on this, Rob. There are a lot of people in public and on Twitter or X, I never know what to call it these days, who are saying, uh, no, 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 you know, government spending is fine. It's fine for the government to do all this. Um, it really was just COVID and supply lines and supply chains. And the reason why I don't believe that answer is because if the inflation that we had was driven by supply chain issues, and those were issues in 2020 and 2021, then what we would have seen in 22 and 23, when those things got sorted out and, so, and everybody went back to work and economies reopened and shipping rates came down and supply lanes opened, uh, what we would have seen is that prices would have come down. And, you know, here's how you know that. Let's, let's talk about a practical real world example. Let's say, you know, you're in Florida and there's a gigantic hurricane coming and, you know, often they get, they get warning a week in advance. They know. And so what happens? You know, everybody goes, they want to buy uh, supplies. They want to buy generators. And the price of those things goes way, way, way up. And then they get through the storm and the storm is done. And what happens then? Those prices come back down because the supply issues get evened out over time. And that's what happens. But that's not what happened here. Once, you know, we had those supply shocks of 2020 and 2021, they got alleviated. Prices should have come back down, but they haven't. What we've had is not deflation, which is what we should have had if those critics were right. We've had disinflation, which means we've had continued price increases just at a lesser rate. So, you know, the CPI went from 9% to 3% to 2.5%. Okay, but we still have price increases. And the reason for that is massive amounts of government spending. And so, you know, that is what I think is going on. I think the proof I've given is, is the right way to think about it. Believe it or not, people are still debating this. And, you know, fortunately with Gaed, when you have an hour to talk with somebody who's as knowledgeable as he is, you really get a chance to go through these issues in detail and lay out your thoughts. Uh, you know, for people who are interested in seeing that episode, it is up on YouTube. Uh, so if you just go to Lead Lag Report uh, and, you know, just look at what he's done over the last couple of few weeks or put in my name, Broad, um, on his channel, you'll be able to find it. And, you know, we were able to go on at length on that. Yeah, the link to uh, the interview as well is in the written version of the five things. So again, if you haven't already, uh, you can subscribe for a free subscription on the DKI website. That'll actually get you each uh, weekly version of the five things. Uh, that's not a uh, dated uh, content piece that we produce here at DKI. Uh, Gary, I was watching uh, the interview with you and Michael Guyad, and you also talked about uh, energy and specifically uranium. Can you fill in our viewers that may have missed the interview or haven't seen it yet on that conversation? Yeah, Rob, so you know we've owned uranium for three years. 
uh, and it's something we talk about a lot on this show. Um, basically, you know, with uranium, we're looking at a gigantic supply demand imbalance. Right now, the world produces roughly 30 million tons a year less than current demand. And so let's talk about what's happening to demand and then what's happening to supply. On the demand side, countries like India and China, they want to industrialize, they want to ramp up their energy needs, they want to provide their citizens with a better material quality of life, and that means more energy. Those, a high material quality of life and energy use, that correlation is almost 100%. On top of that, we have a, a shift toward green energy people, right or wrong, people are very worried about carbon dioxide and carbon-based um, energy sources. Well, you know, nuclear is the only reliable energy source. Uh, hydroelectric is pretty good too, but it's, it's the, the best uh, reliable energy source for non-carbon needs. Um, and then, you know, we've seen everything happening in the AI space. Everybody over the last couple of years have been focused on AI and it, you know, sled to NVIDIA's rise and a whole bunch of other companies. Within the last few weeks, uh, Microsoft, Google, and Amazon have all contracted to buy nuclear power. In the US, there are three places that are trying to do something that's never done been done before. There are three decommissioned nuclear plants that they are trying to recommission. Uh, so there is just very rapidly increasing demand for nuclear energy. On the other side of it, we're supply limited. Um, you know, in Canada, their largest producer, uh, Cameco, is not producing more. And in fact, Cameco is actually buying uranium at a loss in the spot market to uh, supply uranium to the, the their customers. Basically, they're saying rather than mine more, we'll just buy in the spot market and lose money to fulfill our contracts. We've talked about Kazataprom, which is the world's largest producer. They just cut production partly because they don't want to mine more and partly because they can't get enough sulfuric acid to process the raw uranium. So, you know, what we're looking at here is a market that has supply and demand out of balance and demand is growing quickly and supply is not. It's going to get worse. And we think that means higher prices. Good stuff. And again, if you haven't seen it, uh, you can check out the full interview on the Lead Lag Report YouTube channel. And again, uh, in the written version of the five things, which will also be up on the DKI website, uh, you'll have a link available there to find that content and information. Definitely recommend uh, checking that out anytime, Gary and uh, Mike will have a conversation. It's something you don't want to miss.